Welcome to Digital Marketing Intelligence for Shopify, Ask the Experts, our bi-weekly live show and podcast that features expert interviews and case studies to show you what to do and what's new in Shopify and e-commerce digital marketing for 2022 and beyond. Ask questions, suggest topics, and grow faster with actionable insights and proven strategies from the world's leading Shopify and e-commerce marketing experts. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Digital Marketing Intelligence for Shopify, Ask the Experts. I'm Marissa Morgan, your show host, and I'm the Business Development Manager at Engage. On behalf of myself and the entire team at Engage, I want to welcome you to our bi-weekly digital series. We're talking about Shopify and today's guest is going to share with us how to better customize your Shopify store to meet your brand, product, and customer needs. He's going to talk about what Shopify does well, right out of the box, what apps and add-ons you can use with Shopify, and he'll also dive into the importance of customer retention and how that ties into things like email marketing. We'll also talk a little bit about the SMS marketing aspect of Shopify as an add-in as well. He is a Shopify and Shopify Plus store builder and expert. He is also the CEO and co-founder of a digital marketing agency. I'll share our special guest and we'll learn more about him in just a moment. Before I introduce him, I want to remind you that after today's talk, we always share with you our Engage Digital Marketing News of the Week. That may be a tip or a trend in digital marketing. And because this year our series is focusing on Shopify and e-commerce specifically, our digital marketing news of the week will always fall into that category as well. So whether you're a digital marketing agency or an e-commerce business owner, whether you already have a Shopify store or you're thinking about it, this is the series to help you know what to do, how to do it. And our guest experts are always here every single week to share with you incredible insights in that category. So uh, before we get into today's show, a quick mention of our sponsor, Engage. We are super excited here at Engage because next week we are rolling out SMS marketing for Shopify stores. It is our new app. It is easy to use, easy to integrate into your current system. And the best part about our app is you don't need a technical staff to be able to use our SMS marketing app, which is important, right? Many of, many of the companies using our software and our platform and other platforms like Shopify are small, mid-sized startup companies. So sometimes you don't have access to a technical staff. So it's important for you to have access to apps that are very easy to use and integrate. And the Shopify SMS marketing app from Engage is definitely going to fit your needs. So we all know that, well, actually, maybe you don't know, but I share this often. SMS marketing right now has a 98% open rate which means 98% of the SMS messages that businesses send are opened and read. And that information gets in front of your customer's eyes compared to email right now, which is operating at about a 20% open rate. So if you're not using MS SMS, you need to be using it for your Shopify or e-commerce business because it will not only help you grow your customer list faster, it will increase sales and it will save time with great automated campaigns. Get information, get new product, um, you know, points, get uh, product promotions in front of your customers at a 98% open rate. So super excited about that. It's launching next week, March 1st. And in order to kick off our rollout, we're offering a 30-day free trial and you get 500 free to use messages that you can start using right away to send to your customers and to your prospects and see how SMS marketing for Shopify from Engage works out for you. So super excited about that. And of course, that ties right into today's topic. We're talking about Shopify stores, how to build them, what add-ons and apps you can use. And I want to introduce you to our very special guest who is joining us all the way from Dublin, Ireland. His name is Patrick McCarthy. If you don't know who Patrick is, you need to. Patrick is the founder and CEO of Digifly, an e-commerce agency based in Ireland, helping online store owners accelerate their growth. He does that by optimizing their e-commerce stores on Shopify and Shopify Plus, and also by implementing traffic generation and customer retention strategies for his clients. 
some of those strategies he's going to share with us today during our live show. Uh, three years ago, fun fact, it was just him and a few freelancers, and he literally only had about five clients. Today, he's got four in-house um, you know, digital marketing experts along with himself. And he has another, you know, half dozen to a dozen outsourced uh, contractors. And now he has a client list of 20 and growing. Uh, he still remains a very small company, but they have very ambitious growth plans and plan to expand outside of Ireland into the UK and also the US. Congrats on your growth and your success, Patrick. Uh, super excited to have you here. And fun fact about Patrick, he's actually an airline pilot as well. I think that is super cool. I'm fascinated with flying. And just before the show, we found out that we have something in common. And that is I grew up in Connecticut, now living in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where I'm broadcasting to you live. But Patrick actually lived in Connecticut for a short time as well. Patrick, what were you doing in my neck of the woods? Thank you very much for that introduction, uh, Marissa. I was there for back in my college days for uh, about eight or nine months. Yeah, I was I was working in uh, Bradley International Airport as an airline refueler um, before I got into flying. I think that is so cool. And if my parents happen to be watching today or listening to our podcast, how cool is that? He li we live uh, about a half mile from that airport, Bradley International. So very cool. Well, we're excited to have you here. I'm about to share our show live right now to my LinkedIn. We are live right now on LinkedIn Live, Facebook, and YouTube. And we've got a really great show uh, scheduled for today. Lots of topic um, kind of insights you want to share on Shopify customizing it for your business, your product, your customer. Before we dive into today's you know, uh, talk, would you like to share with us how you got into the business and what led you to found your own digital marketing agency? Yeah, um, so good question. And obviously you mentioned that I'm, I'm, I'm a pilot, so I do have that as, as, a, as an occupation. But um, yeah, back when I was in, in university, I was studying engineering and, and uh, it was a, a 1995, 96 when the internet was becoming a household thing. And, and a friend of mine taught me the basics of web design. And I ended up building uh, a few websites for people and, uh, and for some university uh, departments and, and uh, was going to make a career out of it. And then after that got into actually got into a flying career, um, but always kept the web design in, in uh, as a sideline almost a bit of a hobby and a bit of a passion didn't really commercialize it too much but did a little bit of bit of it here and there and that stayed as it was for for uh, almost 20 years um, and it was only about five or six years ago I was still doing the web design on the side and doing it for one or two uh, clients that I knew that I actually ended up starting my own Shopify store. Um, so shifted from web design and developed my own Shopify store, developed my own e-commerce online business. Um, and through that, learned a huge amount about Shopify um, and grew that business up to, um, it, it was doing uh, a good amount of turnover over uh, the course of about 12 to 18 months. And then subsequently, I went on to sell that business and then shifted the even though I still flying all the time, shifted the web design into um, into now e-commerce and started focusing on instead of just specifically or instead of just general web design, specifically e-commerce develop or Shopify development. Um, and out of that was born. Um, I mean, I always had that web design. I, I had set it up as a business, even though it was just me kind of freelancing. And I shifted, I rebranded it into what's now Digifly, completely uh, focused on on Shopify and. Yeah, like three years ago, it was it was just me and and uh, and a couple of freelancers helping me out, um, and then um, yeah, shifted into Shopify. COVID happening two years ago um, obviously accelerated uh, our growth. Um, Pre-COVID, we had a, had a few clients. There was two of us um, had a few clients, and then uh, throughout COVID, throughout the last 18, 24 months, because a lot of phys uh, companies with physical stores were looking to get online really quickly, um, that brought a lot of demand on us. Um, mm -hmm. So we uh, we expanded. We are now, as he said, I mentioned a team of four people in-house. Uh, we're assisted by an outsourced team of another uh, six um, and another couple of freelancers on top of that who work with us uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, and yeah, even though I still do the flying, I'm not flying as much as I used to. I'm now kind of more part-time uh, on that side of things, and that's allowing me to grow this business as well. So uh, yeah, that's where we are today. 
Fantastic. Well, one thing I, I really like about your background is you have a lot of experience in web design, as you mentioned, right? And I think that probably makes you even more savvy at customizing and optimizing your, you know, your Shopify store, because we all know that, you know, the look and feel of your brand and how it's perceived on your website and whether that translates is a very important part of the branding and marketing side of things. So I think that that's a really unique feature that you offer to your clients is that your background really is in this creative space, specifically with websites. I think that that probably lends itself very easily and very well to what you do for your clients with Shopify. Yeah, I mean, very much so. And that's that's one of the first uh, things that we look at when we start working with a new client and building a new project is the design aspect. And mm -hmm. and uh, you, we start with the design, making sure that that looks correct for, for the client. I mean, we step it back a bit further. Before we start the project, we go in through a full discovery uh, process with our clients so we can get a full understanding of their goals and their needs. And from there, we build out a plan. And with that plan, the first step is that design aspect um, and making sure that it has the look and feel that the client is look is is looking for, um, but also that it's not going to be uh, over designed either. Mm. You know, there's a, there's there's a danger of of over designing, especially when it comes to an e-commerce store uh, that you can have a, an e-commerce store that looks absolutely fantastic but it actually doesn't convert into mm. any sales. So there's there's a there's a bit of a um, uh, a balancing Online. act that needs mm -hmm. to be um, played out in terms of making sure that the uh, the user experience is good throughout the site, but also that uh, and the design is there. But you also want to have a kind of a frictionless experience for the customer so that they can find what they're looking for quite easily and and purchase that and get to the checkout without any real friction. Um, and while design is always an important factor, those those are the factors that also become quite important. Fantastic. Well, we have prepared a really nice, easy to follow outline for today's talk, and you have a lot of insights to share. So we're going to do our best to pack your insights into the next 30 minutes for our audience. If you're watching live right now, whether it's on Facebook or LinkedIn, there is an opportunity to ask Patrick any questions you might have. Drop those questions in the comment section. And if you're watching us live right now, let us know where you're joining us from. If you're just joining us, Patrick is live right now from across the pond in Dublin, Ireland. I am live right now broadcasting from just outside Minneapolis, Minnesota. Let us know where you're joining us from and feel free to drop any questions you have in the comment section. Okay, Patrick, without further ado, we are diving into today's topic on how to customize your Shopify store to meet your brand, product, and customer needs. For those of you listening on the podcast, I'll read through this outline. And for those of you watching, obviously you can read through this outline with me. So first we'll get into the Shopify theme store. How do we select the right theme? Is a theme the right option or do you need to fully customize your Shopify store? That'll be the first thing Patrick's going to touch on. Then we'll talk about how big a role design plays. You just mentioned that, Patrick. Are we over-designing our website? Is that going to hurt the customer experience? Next, we'll talk about what Shopify does well right out of the box, and, and maybe a few things Shopify doesn't do well. What we might need to do to customize or add on to our Shopify so that it really truly meets our brand, product, and customer needs. And then we'll end our talk talking about what apps we can use with Shopify, maybe a few of the pros and cons of using different apps. And I know Patrick's going to dive into a little bit customer retention, uh, the importance of that, what we do to maintain that. And we'll end our talk talking about email automation and, of course, SMS marketing. We have to talk about because Engage is launching our SMS marketing app next week. So, Patrick, without further ado, I'm going to hand the mic over to you. Let's dive into this idea of the Shopify theme and, and whether we have to choose a theme or, you know, if customizing is you know, a better option. And before you do that, I do want to say hello to Mike, who is joining us from Brooklyn. Mike, thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions at all for Patrick, feel free to leave that in the comment section and we'll get to every single question during today's show. Okay, Patrick, you've got viewers. We are joining you. We want to know. Let's dive into the Shopify theme. What do we need to know? So yeah, I mean, this is a great question. And Shopify is, I mean, is, is a great platform for e-commerce and they've positioned themselves in a, in a, in a 
perfect space that they're they they're, it's quite easy to set up a shopify store uh, you don't need a huge amount of technical knowledge um so they're very catered for the small to medium sized businesses but they also cater on on the on the upper end of the enterprise uh, platform uh, much larger businesses uh, in the e-commerce space as well. In terms of themes, in terms of when you're setting up a Shopify store, um, there's you know there's a few ways to go about it. The, the Shopify theme store itself has about a hundred themes in there. A few of them are free, and a few of them you have to pay for. And uh, there's a few other places where you can get themes as well. A, a few third-party uh, marketplaces and um and places like theme forest as well i think they've got about a thousand on there but to be honest i, I probably wouldn't go down that road if you're looking at a theme I'd, I'd stick with the shopify theme store um every theme when you come to look at it they you can go on the shopify theme store and you can preview what they might look like with your products and and content on them um but you need to kind of really pick and choose one that is best suited towards your needs in terms of uh, how many products you might have, what kind of products they are, how many are you going to have video on your site and things like that. Um, the Shopify theme store does try and do a good job of filtering that out so you can select your industry and it'll suggest certain um, themes that might suit you. Um, but it's really until you start to play around and, and, and put a theme. Now, you can put a theme on your store as well for free without paying for it. They only charge you once you go to publish it. So you can kind of play around with a theme yeah. and see uh, what you can do with it. The difference between each theme really is is because they're all developed by third-party developers. So is when you actually go to manage it as a, as a store owner uh, on the back end in the Shopify admin section and you try and customize something, for instance, on the homepage and you might want to swap out uh, a homepage banner for a different banner or you might want to change the size of the text or the font, uh, the type of font or the color of the text. From theme to theme, that can be either you can have a you can have loads of options in there that will give you ultimate flexibility, or you'll have some themes that are quite limiting and they won't necessarily have those options for you. And that's when you need to potentially turn to a developer to to add those in. What we do is when we're we we do both. We, we the other sorry going down the other road is then actually do you not go with a theme at all? Do you actually custom build? uh the site from scratch um and actually essentially custom build a theme your own theme um and that's if you've got bespoke requirements bespoke design requirements then that is certainly a, a road you can go down the other alternative is actually to taking if you want to custom design a, a shopify store is is actually taking an existing theme that has all these back-end options already built in um, and then custom developing on top of that. And that's something that we find uh, works quite well with, with a lot of the stores that we build. We pick an appropriate theme. Sometimes it might be a, a quite a base theme with just a bit of a skeleton uh, there, but it has all those backend options already built in. And then we custom, does, custom build on top of that so that the features and the design features and uh, all the functionality that a, a, a merchant will require in their business are, are put in place that might not already be there in place. but. You know, if I'm if I was starting out as a small to medium sized business, I'd certainly be looking at the Shopify theme store. I mean, there's plenty of good options out there. The, the other one of the providers out of the sandbox, and they're a really good third party provider of of themes. Um, aside from those two areas, um, I wouldn't really look for anywhere else. Um, and again, if you are a larger business and you do have bespoke requirements, especially around design, um, then there is the option to custom build. But that comes with a lot of development hours and it does add on a, a quite a a lot of work um from a customization point of view i like this so you're saying that shopify right out of the box really does offer some great themes and what's nice about the way that they have it set up is you can actually pop those themes into your store to kind of gauge how they're going to look really kind of preview them mm -hmm. before committing and you don't necessarily have to commit until you're ready to publish. And at that point, there is a fee, right? And I'm assuming that, uh, that fee goes a portion to Shopify and a portion to the designer. Uh, and that that's that's a great option, especially as you said, for a small to mid-sized business who doesn't really have a technical staff and they, you know, want something that's really, you know, a template that's pre-designed for them versus the other route, which you shared would involve more of a technical staff and, you know, a lot more layers. But then you've got your technical staff who can obviously go in and make changes and customize even further versus when you use a Shopify theme, sometimes you may hit some roadblocks as you uh, try to customize it to meet certain needs. 
Fantastic. And then yeah. what was the other, you shared Shopify's, their themes are fantastic. And then is it called Out of the Sandbox? Out of the Sandbox. Yeah. Is, is another, it's out of the sandbox.com is their website off the top of my head. Um, and they have a few themes that, um, so to, to, to get into the Shopify theme store, you need to uh, go through an approval process um, and you need to tick a lot of boxes. Uh, the Out of the Sandbox themes actually are not in the Shopify theme store. It's not because they don't necessarily meet the approval process. Um, it's more that they they have a they, they actually have a lot more flexibility in them than you might find with a Shopify theme. They're a little bit more expensive as well, which is one of the reasons they're uh, probably not in the Shopify theme store. Um, but with that, they give a huge amount of flexibility. Um, not necessarily for whoever's developing it, if it's an agency that's developing using that theme, more for the store owner once this once they start operating the store and they actually want to go in and make quick changes and they want to move stuff around the page and they want to uh, shift stuff around the product page or collection page. And there's, there's a lot more options in those themes we've found than some of the ones on uh, the Shopify theme store. That said, the ones on the Shopify theme store are very, very good as well. It's just that these ones tend to have a little bit more, uh, more options on them. I have a question for you, Patrick. Hmm. If I am a small or mid-sized business owner and I'm just getting into e-commerce and Shopify and I want to go ahead and just start simple, start with the Shopify themes, I find one I like, we're going to talk a little bit about design and, you know, you having a great website that maybe doesn't convert. If into my experience, let's say I'm two or three months in and I'm finding that this theme doesn't really fit my brand or the way that it's set up, um, you know, is maybe a little janky or not as frictionless. Is it easy to go in and make a change or, I mean, I'm someone who I'm resistant to change, right? I like, oh, I like things the way they are. You know, I get nervous about commitment. How committed are you when you pick your Shopify theme? Yeah, well, in terms of commitment, I mean, once you pay for it, once you publish it, you you have to pay for it at that point. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you find after a few days or a week or so, it's not the theme for you, it would be really just, you would have to contact the, the third party provider to see, can, is there any recourse? But, um, you know, in terms of if you found then that in, the financial side of it uh, aside, if you was like, well, we need to, we want to switch theme, um, you, that's something that you can do reasonably easily. What you still would have to do is you then have to, you could switch theme and you still have to rebuild the likes of your, your homepage content, but all the product information is there. All the, all your, your product information is stored on your product pages within Shopify. So your, your, your product title, your, your imagery, your product description, and the theme then just pulls all that information in. So to switch a theme from a technical standpoint, isn't isn't a huge thing, but it, it it really well. It does really depend on how much content you have on your homepage, uh, how you've laid out your collection pages, and things like that. But from a product perspective, it still pulls everything in um, into that new theme. But yeah, so if you wanted to switch, you really want it. You want you, you do want to try and get it right the first time. Um, right. And uh, if the other route is that you get a develop, you know, if there's something that you want to change and it's not a massive switch. You know, you get a you get a developer to come in and, and just custom develop that part of the existing theme, theme okay. that mm -hmm. will suit your needs. And and um, a lot of times that's the easier option and the better option rather than completely retheming. Right. Okay, good. This makes sense. It sounds easy to use, especially if you don't have a technical staff. And I think um this is probably why Shopify is doing so well right now with millions of stores up and running um, domestically and across the world. Well, mm. let's dive a little bit into the role of design because you touched on that as we started our show. Uh, sometimes a website or a storefront can be a little over-designed and, and be way too much friction to be a smooth experience for the user. And then maybe there's the opposite, you know, where a website is maybe, you know, kind of low key in design where it doesn't offer the user an exciting or interesting experience. So share with us your experience and how you've helped your clients find the balance with the right amount of design for their storefront. Yeah, and it is, it really is a balance in terms of, you know, making your store look professional um, because from, for starters, you can, uh, as I said, some of the Shopify themes are free. So if you're starting up a store on a limited budget, you can quite easily set up a Shopify store, pick one of the free themes, throw in a bit of content, your logo if you have it, and some products and product imagery, um, and you're up and running. Um, 
but it might not look great. It's not going to look very professional. It's going to have that, uh, and maybe this is something that I just see these days, that that free Shopify theme look about it, um, where you can kind of see it was just, you know, it was it was made in, you know, by potentially the store owner who doesn't have a huge amount of technical knowledge and but has the products and they want to sell their products and they've 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 put up their uh, their info and their their product details and product imagery. So, in terms of making it uh, look a bit more, more professional, that's when you know. Again, we'd recommend you know if it's somebody who's um, starting up a new store, picking a, a theme that's probably one of the paid themes. They tend to have a better look and feel about them, uh, even without any customization. They can they can you can get them looking quite professional. Um, then beyond that, it's you know what can you do with the site to make the design look well without impacting the functionality or impacting on conversions on the site. And that's where you do have to be careful that you don't over design. Um, you know, at the moment we're looking at it, the the, the uh, bread and butter e-commerce site you'll see everywhere is a kind of almost has a standard homepage feel to it. About it. You've got a, a, a homepage hero banner at the top with a, mm -hmm. um, a, a, a promoted product on, on that. Potentially, you've got two or three on a slider carousel. Um, we're 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 trying to encourage a lot of our clients to get away from those slider carousels now because to be honest the second and third once you go beyond the second slider i think it's it's uh, about 80 percent of people don't even see that second one and about 90 percent don't even see anywhere beyond ah. the third so um and then we're actually looking you know especially on on mobile devices is getting away from that um homepage hero altogether and and just bringing in more easy navigation block elements that you can navigate to uh collections quite easily because at the end of the day i mean you do want to showcase your products but also mm -hmm. you want to make it as easy as possible for the customer to find what they want finding what they want and being able to purchase that product uh with as least with as a little friction as possible is the key um and as much as you want to make your site look professional, you want to make it look good. Um, there is the danger of over designing um, mm -hmm. if you go too far. One of the big things, one um, and 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 this is uh, unique to e-commerce stores is product photography. You know, an agency you can bring an agency in to uh, develop uh, and design a, a wonderful site for you. Um, but unless you either give them control of your product photography or you have professional product photography done, um, it can really impact your site. Um, and I've seen a lot of e-commerce sites out there that have lovely design all around and then you get to the product and the, the photography is poor or um, there isn't a standardized uh, way of photographing each product. So I think the product photography is, is a huge part to play as well. And that, that, kind of comes into the design aspect that's where you want to because again at the end of the day the customer is wants to wants to buy the product so they want to see the right. product and they want to see it uh in as best a light as possible so all the design around that is only going to have a limited effect if your product photography is poor absolutely and you know one thing that i've seen recently i want to call it the bait and switch um on some of these conglomerate um kind of sell all websites that sell products from all kinds of vendors. There's mm. a big one. It's like a jungle theme, right? Jungle name. You know what I'm talking about. But I'm seeing a lot of bait and switch on some of those websites where I can tell the product photography is actually taken from another website or another company or another brand. And they either reuse their photos. So you'll see the same exact photo for like nine different companies for that product or I'll even see where they'll have five photos from another brand and then the last photo will be theirs and you can tell their product is not at all the same. Um, and what's interesting about that is as a customer, I'm smart enough to have noticed that recently happening more and more. And that's actually starting to almost turn me off from some of these larger conglomerate, you know, kind of wholesalers of all brands. And it's actually sending me more to specific websites for companies. Because when I go to that website, I get an immediate feeling like, okay, this website is legit. Let's say I want a pair of white cowboy boots, right? This website is legit. I can tell this photography is specific to their brand, their products. It's all like matching. 
I'm not seeing this like random bait and switch situation. I, oh, it's made in the United States. Oh, you know, this is the return policy. This is who the team is versus, you know, doing a random search for white cowboy boots and getting all the stuff that looks the same. But as you dive into like the product details, oh, this is made in a country maybe I don't trust. Oh, this is going to take four months to get here. Oh, this is definitely a, a kind of a knockoff site. It's just very interesting how product photography can tell a lot of your story and why that is so important. That makes total sense, Patrick. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there was something you mentioned also. I think it's interesting that you mentioned going away from the carousels as well. Um, I'm a big fan of the really simple hamburger part of the hamburger menu part mm. of a website because I know that that is kind of my go-to place no matter what the homepage looks like. So if the homepage has too much going on, I for me, my failed proof, you know, my go-to is always the hamburger. And I always want to see something simple like, you know, products or shop, you know, uh, return policy, our story, you know, contact us. I want the basics and I want to be able to access that easily. And um, that is always where I go if I feel like the website is over-designed and too much. Because I've experienced that where you go to a website, there's carousels with all these things. There's like 97 options right away. And I'm like, I know I'm not even shopping for that. You know what I mean? I'm glad you, you make that, but that's not even what I'm shopping for. Why are you bombarding me with all of this stuff at the beginning? It, it is such a turnoff, I think. It's, it's like uh, your brain gets oversaturated with information so quickly, you don't even have a chance to like, ha you know, have a moment with the brand. Very much so. And, I, and one of the other aspects that we focus on on uh, quite a lot is is having really good search functionality on a, on a website, um, yes. especially if it's, uh, you know, if it's a, you know, if you've only got five or six products, that's not much of an issue. But if you've got if you've got anywhere more than 50 products, um, then search really comes into play and having and again, you know, these coming back to the theme story, you'll get some themes that have, you know, a, a search bar in there, but the functionality behind the search isn't amazing uh, and we'll come on to it when we talk about apps but you know there are some really good apps out there that will give you really good search functionality predictive search functionality and uh, and the great thing about having search on there as well especially if you do have a large catalog you can see what people are searching for that you don't have um, and it gives you a product idea is go okay a lot of people were searching for that even though we don't have it maybe we should get it in so things like that are uh, are key as well well, I do want to say hello to Lexi, who's joining us on Facebook, Corrine, who's also watching on Facebook. If any of you have questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section and we'll bubble them up during today's talk. But Patrick, you, you're a very good speaker. Your points are so clear and concise. I think you're doing a really great job of walking us through really how to take our Shopify store and customize it to best fit our product, our category, our customer. So let's talk now about what Shopify does well right out of the box versus where it can use a little help. And if that help is an add-on or an app, we'll get into that as well. So what does Shopify in your experience? Oh, Lexi says hello, by the way, with a nice Hi, little Lexi. wave. Hi, Lexi. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. What does Shopify do really well right out of the box, especially for a startup? Well, obviously, it's an e-commerce platform. So it does e-commerce very, very well. If you want to set up and, and uh, uh, have a bunch of products that you want to sell, you can get them set up very quickly, very easily, uh, and it you know it, it you don't have to worry about payment processing because Shopify payments in most countries is built in. Um, you it will do things like multi multi currency, multi language very well, um, and will, it'll present your products um, in the way they should be presented on the e-commerce store uh, across a collection page and a product page, and bring you through the cart and the checkout in a seamless process, um, and have all those notifications built in, the order notification and your shipping notification, and and, and integrate all your your fulfillment tools and and uh, uh, and shipping providers as well. So it is. You know, there's 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 millions. There's I think 1.2 maybe 1.3 million. I don't know what it is now. Merchants on Shopify, um, and there's a good reason for that because um, they just do e-commerce really well, and they position themselves so that they you can get in quite easily on it, but at the same time um, have all the tools in place that you're not looking to set up payment processors and integrate them into into it, um, so that you're fully set up and it's a it's a kind of an uh, uh, a one-stop shop, really, to, to set up your e-commerce uh, uh, business. 
You know, speaking of statistics, I, I pulled up a few that I had shared in a recent show, and I'm sure the numbers are even higher now, Patrick. But right now, there's over 5,300 Shopify Plus stores. That was as of 2021. So we know that's higher. Mm. Uh, Shopify merchants run over 1 million businesses in 175 different countries. And yeah. uh, in the United States, Shopify's market share is currently the largest of all the e-commerce platforms running nearly a third, about 32 to 33% of the e-commerce websites. That's pretty incredible. So that means for sure, right out of the box, Shopify does a lot well. Um, and you just shared many of those things. I like the integration of payment for sure, mm. especially when you are working a business that is international and you have different forms of payment that you have to deal with. Um, that's a huge benefit, especially again, if you don't have a huge technical staff. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I guess the flip side to that is then, uh, I don't know if you're going to ask this question, but what do they not do very well? You know, what could they take do it better? away? Yeah. Take it away. Well, yeah. I mean, as I said, you know, there's the, the and they're constantly, you know, we've been working with Shopify now for a number of years um, and uh, they're constantly improving. They're constantly bringing out new updates. Um, they last year rolled out what they call online store 2.0, which had a, a huge number of improvements. Um, but there's still some things that if that, you know, they don't do really well. I mean, if you asked a, a, a if you asked a, a room full of Shopify store owners, they give you uh, dozens of things that they'd like to change or not change, but have features that they would add on. Like some of the typical ones are, um, you know, if you have uh, they have a blog feature. So if you've got blog articles, you can put them on, but it's not amazing. Um, and it's it feels sometimes like a bit of an afterthought. Um, and if you really want to um, uh, design a, a really well uh, created blog section on your site. It, they don't really come well with the, you know the likes of the themes that we've been talking about. You would have to get somebody to custom develop that in. Similarly, with kind of rich content areas, if you want to tell a lot about your uh, about your brand story, about your company, um, and build in uh, some rich content in terms of video and and have that featured really well in content sides of the uh, of the website. Shopify doesn't out of the box uh, provide for that really well, but they do rely heavily on a, on a very big ecosystem of third party apps, which we'll come out to uh, in a minute. But yeah, I mean, the other, a few of the other examples of things that they don't do very well, uh, for instance, like bundling products. So a lot of uh, merchants will want to offer products in bundles to their customers, but uh, you need to use a third party app in order to be able to achieve that with Shopify. It's not something that's natively in there. And again, things like search and filtering, they'll be at the mercy of whatever theme you're using, again, unless you use a third party app. That said, there are plenty of apps out there that will uh, pretty much tick any box that you want to. It's just a question of finding the right one. Well, I think we just scored your agency some business because Lexi, who's watching, actually said that she has a botanical skincare brand and she wants to reach out to you and maybe partner up and have you help her open up her Shopify store. Okay. Well, Lexi, Love let's uh, have a talk after. Absolutely. Lexi, continue to watch our show. We've got another 10 minutes or so with Patrick. And at the end of our show, I'll share how you can connect with Patrick on LinkedIn. And also I'll share his uh, company website so that you can connect with him uh, also through that website. And uh, we'll connect you guys. And I think that would be great. And maybe for a future show, Lexi, we can have you on with Patrick and we can talk about, you know, how he helped you start your Shopify store and maybe how he helped you problem solve and, and get your Shopify store customized for your target demographic and your skincare brand. I think that would be really cool. What do you think, Patrick? Sounds good, Marissa. Yeah, I love it. Good. Well, we have a few more minutes. So let's, um, and she says, oh my gosh, that's so funny. So she says, thank you so much. I'm on the site right now. So she's already down, she's down in the DigiFly. Well, we don't, don't dive too much into that, Lexi. Oh, she says, I'm so excited. This is awesome. <laughs> don't go anywhere. L keep listening. We've got a couple more tips and insights from Patrick, and then you can dive into his website. Well, we're excited. This is what Engage does well. We connect people, right? We connect, um, you know, small, mid-sized businesses with the experts to help them really push their e-commerce and their Shopify business into the future and uh, set them up for success. And that is why our digital marketing series on Shopify has been so successful. And Lexi, you're going to want to check out the Engage Shopify SMS app, which launches next week. So you can totally text 
and communicate um, with your customers that way. Because we all live on the telephone, don't we, Lexi? I know you. I know you do, girl. All right, let's kind of wrap up our talk talking about um, you know some of maybe your favorite apps to use with Shopify. You don't have to name drop, but if there's one that you love so much, feel free to share. And let's touch on email automation and SMS marketing, you know, as a way to, you know, boost mm -hmm. your customer retention. So let's start talking about, you know, the pros and cons of using apps with Shopify. Yeah. So I, I mentioned, obviously, it's, Shopify is supported by an ecosystem of apps. There's the Shopify App Store in a similar way that you've got the Apple App Store, or the uh, the Google Play Store. And uh, I think there's about 6,000 apps in there now. So as I said, Shopify does some things really well out of the box, but there's a lot of boxes it doesn't tick. Um, but anything that you do need is generally uh, covered by any of the apps. Now, some of them are free. Uh, most of them you have to pay a monthly subscription for. So you just pay for them as you use them. Um, a lot of them have a free trial, so you can trial them over a period of uh, seven days or even 30 days with some of them. Um, and then, you know, we've we've used a lot of them uh, across when we've been uh, a lot of them in trial and error uh, on some uh, of our client stores to see what works well. Over the course of the last few years, we've we've figured out which ones work really well and, and which ones not so well. Um, off the top of my head, a few ones that we really recommend to uh, to clients. Uh, one is one that is called is called Rewind, um, and it's really just gives a backup of your of your whole mm -hmm. Shopify site, um, and it doesn't improve the customer experience. It just uh, will give you a, a peace of mind uh, if somebody comes in and accidentally de deletes a bunch of products or accidentally deletes a few uh, pages of content or your product imagery or anything. You can literally just go in and rewind it to from where it, it, it happened because uh, Shopify, again, doesn't really do that. Uh, doesn't have that feature built in. Another one that we we always tend to recommend is and I, I touched on um, having really good search functionality and also filtering uh, options on your site, especially if you've got a large catalog of products so that consumers can find those products quite easily. Um, we use one called product filter and search. It, uh, we found it really powerful for search and uh, and filtering functionality on on uh, on Shopify sites. Um, then, you know, there's, you know, as I say, there's there's a, a lot of other um, apps on there which will help with things like uh, and you know we're moving into talking about like customer retention and email marketing um and i think from a customer retention uh, perspective that is now becoming more and more important um because it's getting harder to acquire new customers with uh you know the ios 14 or 15 i can't remember what it is restrictions with facebook <laughs> advertising instagram advertising uh you know at the um uh, getting rid of third-party cookies is affecting uh, Google mm -hmm. ads and things like that. So it's getting more expensive to bring in new customers. And I think a lot of uh, merchants don't put enough focus on actually retaining the ones that they've already got in. Um, they let them come in once and they go and they, they never really chat, talk to them again. So uh, customer retention, building community, I think is now becoming a, a massive part of e-commerce and it's one that i think merchants are going to need to start focusing on more and more um as acquiring new customers becomes uh, more difficult so yeah um apps around that would be another one that we've used with clients is one called smile um they do rewards and referral schemes they do them really well so you can have kind of a a, a loyalty scheme where you you, you um accumulate points and you can uh, redeem those for uh, for certain things on on, uh, on e-commerce stores uh, and also referral schemes where you can uh, encourage people to uh, refer their friends and family for incentives um, and that uh, is allows you to then you know build up uh, brand loyalty uh, and also community and then on the end of that then is you know one of the biggest tools and one I know you're going to mention is SMS, SMS marketing, but also the email marketing side of things as well. Um, and building in, you know, the tools out there now for email marketing are quite powerful and you can build in some really powerful automations that you want, you know, once you set them up, um, they, you can let them run and, and uh, you don't really have to touch them and, and they'll do wonders for customer retention in terms of keeping your brand uh, front of mind with uh, a lot of your existing customers uh, and also bringing new people onto your email list so that you can tell your brand story you know to, uh, uh, and uh, and things like that so it's uh, that's a really powerful tool as well uh, along with the uh, the sms marketing you are just a wealth of information. I can see now why everybody in the audience is getting excited. And, and I think, you know, for those of you listening to this podcast replay, 
If you're thinking about opening a Shopify store and you're just not sure where to start, talking to somebody like Patrick, reaching out to an agency is a great way to not only, you know, it's almost like getting like a consultation, right? If you're thinking about changing your hair color and you don't know if you should be blonde or brunette, right? You, what do you do? You don't just sit at home and, and ask your dog or your mom, what do you think? Maybe you go to a salon and you have a consultation. You say, hey, this is what I'm thinking. This is what my need is. This is how I want something to look. This is how I want to be portrayed. You, you go for a consultation. And I feel like, you know, linking up with an agency like Digifly or an agency like Patrick's is a great place to start just so that you don't feel so alone and just spin your wheels or waste time wondering what to do. This is where you can absolutely go and seek help from somebody who is an expert in that niche, right? Someone like Patrick. You've shared so much information, Patrick. I feel like we could talk all day, to be honest. You're such a fabulous guest. So I'm excited that you were able to share some time with us today. Just to hit on to SMS marketing, because that's something that we're excited to be a part of. I've mentioned it already. If you're just joining us, Engage. What we are is a cloud-based platform that offers tools and services for small to medium to, you know, you know, even some large businesses to really be able to optimize their customer experience. And the SMS marketing app for Shopify from Engage is actually launching next week. And we love to talk about SMS because the open rate is so high, Patrick. And and I actually feel like you, uh, you'd you be like the perfect fit to uh, offer our service to your clients because SMS right now is opened at a 98% conversion rate, you know, compared to email. I think some people are starting to go away from email. It's easy mm -hmm. to not even look at your email. Um, and I'm sure you'll agree, but we're always on our phones and SMS is almost becoming the preferred method of communication, even socially. Um, so it makes sense that businesses are moving towards that business model. And one thing I like about SMS is when businesses do it ethically, right? Always asking customers to opt in, you know, giving customers an easy way to opt out. Hey, if you don't want to receive any more messages, just reply stop, you know, versus like an email where you have to go to an unsubscribe button, you have to re-enter your email. Sometimes you just have to tell them why you don't want to receive the email, um, SMS is a great way to build the customer list and increase the brand um, brand loyalty and certainly customer retention as well. So if you're listening on the replay, our app may have already launched. Check it out. It's the N-G-A-G-G-G-E. N-G-A-G-G-G. G-G-E is how you spell engage. I think I'm. I think my coffee is wearing off, Patrick. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, ready for another cup of caffeination this morning. But N G A G G E is our brand, and you can just do a Google search right now for SMS. Uh, marketing app, Engage. Um, our site will be up next week, starting first week of March. So we'll be able to share that with you. Um, Patrick, I want to dive into our Engage news of the week, if that works for you. Yeah, um, please. Get your input on that, and then we'll share how our audience can connect with you, and more specifically, how Lexi can connect with you um, to move forward with building her Shopify store. Uh, all right, sure. let's, you guys, let's do our Engage News of the Week. Every single week, I share a tip, a trend, a piece of news. And this year, we're focusing on Shopify. So everything we share will be uh, related to that niche. This week, we're talking about TikTok. Recently, TikTok launched a free online course on how to use the platform in the best way for your brand. Sounds simple, but I think TikTok is one of those platforms where people either get it or they kind of don't, and they're kind of confused by it. So I think this is a great way for TikTok to overcome that challenge. You can learn a lot of tips and tricks on how to use TikTok for your business in terms of targeting, inspirational ideas, and many more. So very simply put, that is our news of the week this week, and it pertains to TikTok. And here is a link for you guys. Oops, I'm supposed to click that. There we go. There's a link for that TikTok course for those of you listening on our podcast. It's HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. TikTok, all one word, dash tactics.com. So we're talking about the TikTok tactics course, a way for you to easily learn how to use TikTok to work for your brand. From your experience, Patrick, are you seeing that TikTok is one of those apps that clients are kind of shy about using because they do feel like they have to be dancing or acting silly or have to spend hours creating these videos? Um, or do you find that your clients are starting to warm up to TikTok as, a, as an app for their business? 
A little bit. We have a couple of clients who are who are who are using it quite actively. Um, mm -hmm. We have some who uh, aren't at all, and then we have some who we're, you know we're we're actually trying to encourage to, to use as well. Because I mean, it's you know TikTok is probably still thought of as uh, the the app that just teenage girls use, uh, whereas um, that has shifted very much so. And you know, there's a huge demographic right up to the older demographic um there's there's massive from 20 to 50 and even up to 60 that are a huge population of that are uh, engaged with tiktok now so it's and because you can get so much organic reach on tiktok quite easily um it's a platform that i think if, if you're not using it you should be using it um because it's it's such a great way to reach out yeah you do need to put a bit of thought into creating some engaging content you can't just post static images of your products but um there are ways and means to you know they're short videos so that you can you can you can do you don't have to put a huge amount of thought into them or a huge amount of, it's certainly not any professionalism into them and uh, just make some some nice engaging videos and uh they will probably do wonders for your business no doubt I agree. And from my personal experience, I mean, I use Instagram and I just recently got onto TikTok. You know, there are ways, especially with courses like this, to learn how to create this engaging content. And there's tips. And just one of the tips I'd like to trend, because I have a video right now that's actually starting to go viral. It's insane. It's a silly video, but it was a trending sound effect. I mm -hmm. made the video right in the app. So I didn't even do any editing. And I'm at this point, like 60,000 views in like five days, which is the first video I've ever had even start to kind of go towards that viral 100,000 mm. or 500,000 view world. Um, and what's funny is it was not a super highly planned video. It was done right in the app. As I mentioned, it was, this was Instagram. I didn't do any editing and it was just a really funny trending thing. So keep in mind that, you know, the tips that are out there and the people that are creating this content daily um, there's just a lot of opportunity to learn. And, and don't forget that if you're a small to mid-sized business and you feel like that's not your world, don't worry about it. Hire somebody who does, you know, that is their world because we always, um, highly promote that you should do what you do best. Right. And if you're the founder and the CEO and, and your brain is just somewhere else in your business and, and creating that social content, isn't easy for you, then don't waste your time and your precious energy doing it. Find somebody who does that for a living and who does it well. And, and that's a great asset to your brand and a great way to get onto these social media platforms and, and have a presence, right? That can boost your brand. We're all about delegating, right? You have apps for Shopify that do certain things. You can hire an agency like Digifly to do the things that they do well so that you can focus as a business owner on what you do well, right? Wouldn't you agree, Patrick? Delegate. Absolutely. Delegate, delegate. Well, let's delegate our audience to connect with you after today's show. I'm going to share your LinkedIn link. You can find Patrick. It's Patrick, P-A-T-R-I-C-K, McCarthy, M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y. He is based in Dublin. And his company is Digifly. So I'll also share his company website. So when you look for him on LinkedIn, it's Patrick McCarthy with Digifly. And he's based in Dublin, Ireland. And you can visit his website, https colon forward slash forward slash Digifly, D-I-G-I-F-I. -I, oh, I am just all with the not yeah. spelling today. D-I-G-I-F-L-Y dot i e forward slash. So Digifly, you can obviously do a Google search and you won't have a problem finding that. Yeah. What can our audience expect to find? I know that um, Lexi's already on your website, just in her glory. Uh, what can our audience find on your website? Is there a way to contact you also through your website? Yeah, 100%. We have our, our contact details on there, our email address. You'll see some of the previous work that we've done, some testimonials. Uh, and there's also a link if you want to actually book a, uh, a Zoom call with us as well. So um, we'll happy to, happily jump on a call with anybody, uh, 10, 15 minutes, and we can we can have a chat. And uh, and that uh, link is on the on the website. Perfect. Don't forget, if you do connect on LinkedIn with Patrick, please let him know that you heard his show on digital marketing intelligence, that you, you, know, you saw him with Engage. That's always helpful for our guests to know where you heard or saw them. It gives them a, you know, a base starting point for the connection. And we love to connect you know, our audience members with our guest experts. So that means a lot to us. 
Patrick, I want to thank you so much for sharing your time, your experience, your great insights on customizing our Shopify stores today. You have been a wonderful guest, and I'm excited for what your agency will be accomplishing now and into the future. And I'm excited to have connected you with Lexi. I'm excited to hear how that goes. Thank you very much, Marissa. It's been an absolute pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you again so much, Patrick. And we hope to work with you again in the future. Thank you. What a wonderful guest. This series this year by Engage Digital Marketing Intelligence for Shopify Ask the Experts is really blowing up. And I, I see why. When we have a guest like Patrick who can come on and share years of experience as the founder and the CEO of his own digital marketing agency, he has so much to offer in terms of what he and his agency does best. But, but really exploring those insights in this cool live format is so cool because as we did today, we can connect guests with these experts. We can take live questions. We can talk about, you know, the problems you might be having. And all around, this just becomes a really cool, almost like a workshop environment. So big thanks and a big uh, appreciation to you, Patrick, for joining us for today's show. Don't forget to connect with Patrick on LinkedIn. It's Patrick McCarthy out of Dublin. His company is Digifly. My name is Marissa, and it's been a pleasure. Um, hosting today's show with you. I do want to share a few things. If you missed today's show, if you're just joining us, we do have something called the Live Show Library, and it's very easy to find. You're going to go to engage.com, that's N-G-A-G-G-E.com, forward, forward slash live dash show dash library. There you'll see some great testimonials from previous guests, and you'll also be able to watch any of our previous episodes. Patrick's show will be added on Monday to our live show library, Monday, Fe February 28th. So you can check that out. We also have a podcast library as well, where you can listen to all of our incredible previous shows. Okay. I want to let you know our next show is scheduled for next Thursday. That's going to be March 3rd at 11 a.m. Eastern. Our guest is Andre Gadashevich. He is the CEO of Make Be Cool. He'll be joining us on Thursday. And if you're interested to know more about future guests and future shows, of course, I want to invite you to connect with Engage. And you can do that on LinkedIn. Let me share our LinkedIn connector. Here we are. Why am I spacing? There it is. It's our company page and you can find us N-G-A-G-G-E -G -G -E, by looking for the rainbow colored cog wheel. Connect with us there. And of course, if you are interested in learning more, perhaps Lexi, our audience member, is interested in learning more about the SMS marketing for Shopify app that is launching the first week of March, you can connect with me as well on LinkedIn, the Marissa Morgan, or you can email me directly. and I'd be happy to set up a demo for you in the coming weeks. Marissa.m at engage.com is my personal email address. All right. That is all for today's show. On behalf of myself and the entire team at Engage, I want to thank you so much for joining us. I want to thank our special guest, Patrick, and I want to wish you all a wonderful weekend and good luck building your Shopify stores. I look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, have a great day.